NSX, the car that Honda developed to challenge the world's performance car market. And we can't speak of the Type R concept without mentioning this car. I've never driven a car that handles this well. The NSX debuted in 1990 with a mid-engine and a body made entirely of aluminum. The engineers pursue ultimate performance as a roadworthy sports car, but also emphasize comfort for drivers using this car on a daily basis. The NSX created a standard for the sports car market in the 90s, and this can be proven by looking at how Ferraris and Porsches have evolved during the last decade. However, on the tracks, the NSX wasn't even the fastest Japanese sports car when it debuted. The opponent of the one-on-one -on -one battle was the defending champion, the Nissan Skyline R32 GTR. Right after the start on the first hairpin, the NSX is already losing its position. The gear ratios are too wide for this uphill, so I'm falling behind. On the first hairpin, I'm getting a strong uplift from the inside tires. Considering that the battle took place on a circuit with plenty of tight corners, the NSX lost its debut battle against a rival that was constructed from a completely different perspective. And this, from the scuba circuit battle against a new rival, the Mazda RX-7, which made its debut in October 91. The NSX goes after the RX-7, which made a good start, jumping to second. Even though the RX-7 only has 225 horses, the low weight and high cornering speed lets it keep the top position. Although the NSX has potential, the car showed big rolls in the corners and loss of traction from tire uplift which leads to this result on the circuit. In November 1992, the Ultima NSX was born, the Hinomari Honda, which was the nickname of the first Japanese F1 machine to win the Formula One race in the 60s, and the great-grandfather of this car. The machine was given the red Honda badge on a championship white body color, a tradition of true Honda sports cars. The car was given the name NSXR. On the official NSXR catalog, it says this model was born to run on the track. The NSXR debuted as a roadworthy car with the performance of a racing car. In pursuit of performance, a total weight of 120 kilos from the end recording and even the harness parts were stripped off from the original NSX. Furthermore, to increase the driving pleasure and the controllability, two aluminum reinforcement bars were added to the front. The whole suspension system, from the spring and damper to the rubber bushings and LSD, were developed from scratch for ideal steering characteristics on circuits. In addition, the tires were newly developed, especially for the NSXR. If you look at the way the car is pitching on this country road, you can tell that the NSXR was designed to go on the tracks. Except for the titanium piston rods used for this NSXR, the engine specs were left untouched. The NSXR beat the NSX in the quarter mile race by 0.64 seconds. The standard gear ratios are exactly the same, but the final gear has been lowered by 5%, which gives the NSXR the advantage in performance. The cockpit is specially coordinated for the NSXR 
to give the driver the excitement and the pleasure of driving this machine. At the same time, competition parts are used to increase weight reduction and functionality. The NSXR's competitive debut at Scuba Circuit, the slippery condition of the track that day, even sent Gansan for a little spin. Now, will the NSXR make a successful debut? All lights go for the Battle Machine Championship match. The Type R tries to take the inside at the first corner but the NSX blocks the way. However, he easily grabs second position with corner exit acceleration. In front was the four-wheel drive GTO, and right behind was the Porsche 911 Carrera RSR. NSXR went for the takeover, entering the slippery second hairpin. Easily passing the GTO for top position. <coughs> Boy, this R is invincible. Absolutely no rivals. Giving no chance to the other machines, the NSXR completes the perfect win. The NSXR's next target is the World Super Sports Cars. Vehicles that are not restricted by the Japanese 280 horsepower regulation. The NSXR passes the 330 horsepower European Spec Supra at the first corner. Catches the 469 horsepower roof at the breaking point into the second hairpin. Next in front is the 400 pony American Monster, the Dutch Viper. Give me a break. The difference in horsepower is no disadvantage for the NSXR because of its amazing cornering speed. After passing the 440 horsepower Ferrari 456 GT, the NSXR almost lines up with the F40, having difficulty increasing pace with its brake problems. The NSXR was using optional larger diameter tires and racing pads. For the champion's battle, the NSXR challenged racing cars using slicks. Back to driving school. You're in my way, GTR. On the infield portion with tight corners one after another, the NSXR, which only had its tires changed to slicks, was way faster than the others. The GTR in front was a N1 championship car. Following right behind was the NSX-based racing car, the ADAC GT. 
Adex on my tail. In the end, he showed an exciting dead heat against the Group A champion Civic and finished in fourth place with lap times in the 1.3 minute range. The slick tires nowadays generates a tremendous amount of grip. In other words, the stress input is high, which results in excess of burden to the suspension. The difference between racing cars and production cars can be seen here with more rigidity in the suspension. Now let's see a time attack, uncut, using optional larger diameter tires at Suzuka Circuit. The driver is Motoharu Kurosawa. When a car is built to perfection, it becomes an NSX R. Good golly, Miss Molly. 100 miles per hour may be a bit too much. It does exactly what you want. It's all up to the driver. NSXR's limited production on orders for a three-year term finished at the end of 1995. Actual delivery was set to be only around 500 units, as the price was almost up to $84,000. The debut of the second Type R, the Integra Type R, was in August 1995. 
This made Honda's Type R concept clear and within reach for average sports car fanatics. A front wheel drive formula. This is just like driving a front wheel drive formula car. Although the price was set around $17,000, the Integra R was made with the same spirit as the NSXR to prove that even a front wheel drive car can deliver Honda's racing spirit. Wow, how far is this going? Right to 8,500 revs, and it has massive torque too. The engine was modified to 200 horses. To do this, the Type R engine was taken from the production line and each pole was buffed by hand to remove the slightest roughness of the valve seat. Needless to say, all 16 parts of each engine were buffed by hand. Unlike a mass production car, fastening of the piston rod bolts were done using a micrometer. In a quarter mile, the Type R was hands down faster than the base model. Here's a belt against a 2 liter turbocharged 220 horsepower Sylvia. I got you now. <laughs> the integral Type R earns new ground in the 14 second range. As well as the tuned engine, the cross gear ratios after the second gear, which doesn't miss a beat with a VTEC, contributes to the overall performance of the Integra Type R. Now, let's hear from Tatsuru Ichishima, who knows well about the Spec R engine and its tuning. To increase the power of a natural aspirated engine, you need to raise the revolution and at the same time decrease the friction loss at lower RPMs. This balance is the most basic and important factor in tuning the natural aspirated engine. Raising the revolution speed seems easy, but that's not always true. Until 6,000 rotations per minute, the power working downward is about 1.5 to 2 tons, which is higher than the explosion rate in the combustion chamber. However, when the revolution go beyond 6,000 RPMs, the upward power that pulls up the piston becomes larger than the downward power. Thus, increasing the rotation speed becomes very difficult. When the revolutions get higher, the block twists, the stress of the crank changes and so on, and it gets harder to fairly maintain the clearance of the unit. In a pursuit of power, the 96-spec R engine had to be a reliable production model. Thus, approximately 60 parts were specially developed. It's amazing how well this car runs on a slippery track. Many parts have been tuned from the base model, like the front damper rate, the variable rated rear springs and stabilizers. Also, the suspension bushings have been greatly reinforced. Opposite to the reinforcement centered in front for the NSXR, the front wheel drive Integra R's reinforcement was concentrated in the rear. In addition to the extra reinforcement bar, the body thickness in various parts of the rear have been increased. To overcome the weight increase, 
from the various body reinforcements and other special modifications, like to the suspension. Much effort was made to decrease the weight of the entire car. In the cockpit, we can see a lot of borrowing from the NSXR. Semi-bucket seats with reclining features were chosen to complement the rear seat. The Type R could be considered the lightweight tuned-up version of the base model SIR. Ordinarily, achieving weight loss might mean to take off as many parts as possible, but a simple diet isn't going to give the car optimum balance. Taking the corner weight and height measurement of the Integra R and its base model. With an average weight passenger on board, the left and right ratio of the Type R was symmetrical, giving the car optimum weight balance. The Type R accomplished this by a careful selection of the springs, bushings, and the stabilizers. If you tune this car up further, say by taking more weight off, the optimum corner weight will again be thrown off. To fix that, you'd have to choose stiffer springs or variable rated springs, which would make it necessary to also change to a stiffer stabilizer. Such excess modification would mean sacrificing performance on wet roads and also simply losing riding comfort. In this sense, the Type R is already a finely tuned vehicle. All right, the weighty first time entry of the Integra R, a white three door and a black four door. Competing cars are two liter turbos and even an ARC 7. Oh my gun son! Wow, what a sharp corner entry. I love this VTEC. <laughs> and look at Gonsan go. <laughs> impressive Impreza. See ya. <laughs> That car is turbocharged, isn't it? Going into the first corner, the three-door Integra again passes the Impreza. Oops! Come on! It's a one-two position for the Integras, but this is the fun of racing. Where is everybody? Spinning around somewhere? Gansan doesn't realize what has happened behind him. I'm serious. No fooling around. After five laps of a seven-lap race, the RX-7 finally comes into the picture. Fodo Integra R finishes second in front of the MR2 and Silver Turbos. The reality is that the three-door is 1.2 seconds faster than the four-door. Of course the three-door is faster, but if viewers have family, I think the four-door is more than enough. Are the engines on the four-door and the three-door any different? The engine is basically the same, but the weight and the wheelbases are different. 
Making this much of a car in the small car category is impressive. It's cheap. 18,000 bucks is a bargain for this car. The R is not just an emblem. The R really stands for racing. Haven't had this much excitement in a long time. And so, the 1995-96 Best Motoring Car of the Year goes to... The Integra Type R! All the reviews agreed on this one. Congratulations, Integra Type R! In the Japanese domestic model Endurance Battle, the Integra Type R again showed finesse. The competition was based on lap times for two rounds of 10 laps each. My car isn't fast enough to block him. Yo, watch out! Guess this is going to be a long fight. I'll have to take care of my tires. You left the inside wide open. See ya! Four-wheel drive isn't always the best, yeah? The brakes are fine, but I'm losing traction. I'm going for the win, but then that would make those expensive rides look pretty bad. Here we go with round two. Hope everyone's oil boils and they retire. Look at the sharp entry of this Integra R. The brakes are fine. And the engine is still running strong. The weakness of heavyweight turbo cars is that the oil temperature rises easily. I guess I'll reduce some speed going into the corner and change my acceleration point a little. I'm getting some understeering. The Integra Type R finishes with consistent lap times of 1 minute and 11 seconds throughout the race. The winner of the first Japanese domestic model endurance battle is the Integra Type R. A good car indeed. For 1998, the Integra Type R was newly equipped with discharge headlights, which added some weight, but improved night visibility and also gave the car a GT look. The most significant change was the larger diameter tires and five whole wheels. Brake rotors, both front and rear, were also enlarged. To increase cornering speeds, the suspension was further modified after extensive testing on the circuit. The engine was equipped with an old stainless steel header, giving the car more torque at low revs. This engine was modified with great passion. Enlargement of the thrust bearings, ports, and seals were all fine-tuned by engineers using hand tools. We further wanted to increase the suction on the intake side and so on, but all these hand modifications just took too much time. For this 1998 model, or actually from the late 1996 models, these modifications by hand were done by specially designed machines which did amazing precision work that were actually impossible to do by hand. A quarter mile race between the 96 and 98 models. Hey, not a bad start. This is gonna be a close one. The 98 model leads at third gear. This is a good match. The quarter mile finish was an exact tie. Due to a lowered final gear, the gears up to third are low, 
giving a slight advantage at the start. But with the wider fourth gear, the 96 model closed the gap. And now, the full braking test from about 95 miles per hour. The 96 model marked about 270 feet. And the 98 model, with its bigger rotors, stops at 230 feet. At the circuit, where the modification should really count, it became a head-to-head -head battle with a 200-horse MR2 G Limited. <laughs> of course a win with lap times in a minute and nine second range. It's a stable ride. There's only a slight improvement in quickness, but the brakes and tires really contribute to the stable lap times. It's a driver-friendly car. I guess the gear ratio has some demerits at top acceleration. Yeah, but the first, second and third gears match the circuit. The new Integra R is a fine car. Yes, it seems that way. Yeah, it's a good match. It's really easy to drive. The Integra R is great for low and mid-speed courses. Older Integra R's had problems with the first and second hairpins. You couldn't rev the engine enough for those corners. But now the second gear is a perfect match. Let's see the performance of the 98 Spec R at the Fuji Speedway. Is the oil still okay? Stay cool. This is the second lap of the endurance race. Pay attention to the oil temperature gauge. Hey, 115 degrees. It's getting a little hot. I should turn on the air conditioner. There is no air conditioning, only a heater. This 100R corner feels really nice. But the gear is a little off in the fourth gear. Hey, I see an RX-7. Probably his oil temperature must be rising too. Whoa, so is mine. I'm turning on the heater. Holy cow, it's hot. Too hot. Like a hot tub. Whoa, this is real hot. It's up to 130 now. Come on, seven baby, come on. I'll just overtake him right here. Yeah! This guy's serious. When we run the circuit with racing cars or demo cars, we use smaller oil elements. With large stock elements, the oil pressure fluctuates and the oil element case gets warped. Also, we put baffles in the oil pan or put heat resistant tape in between the header and the oil pan to prevent the oil pressure from fluctuating. If you're driving a 96 spec Integra with uh, over 60,000 clicks and still want to keep on driving it by rebuilding the engine, I recommend at the same time you change the original suspension arm at the rear to a 98 or a later version for a milder ride and easier handling. 
The engine and transmission mounts and shift link bushings are all compatible from 96 to 2000 models. So uh, when changing parts, you should talk to your dealer and specify which parts you want to change to. Before making major modifications, I think you can get some interesting results by changing small parts to enjoy the circuit more. Here we go! As with the Integra R, the Civic Type R has been tested intensively at this Takasu Testing Center's winding course, which was designed similar to the old course of Nürburgring. The third Type R debuted in August 97. Civic R with a chassis, a generation newer, has a wheelbase 1.6 inches longer, but a shorter overhang compared to the three-door Integra R. Suspension and brakes, including the ABS, were fine-tuned after numerous tests. To increase the overall body rigidity, three performance rods were added along with a stiffer front strut tower bar. Also the body thickness around the rear bumper was increased. A 30 kilo diet and a facelift in the interior has become the usual program for the Type R. However, all the gear ratios of the Civic R were identical to the base model. Therefore, improvements in performance were due to the B16B engine, which had been downsized to 1.6 liters from the Integra R's engine. The gear ratios from first to fifth and up to the final gear are the same in these two cars as well. Geez, the Integra R is fast. Maybe I can keep up. Oops, I guess not. But the Civic R also managed to finish in the 15 second range. In comparison to the base model, the Type R engine, which has an additional 15 horses, has an earlier shift point. That results in a 0.58 second difference over a quarter mile. The sector time at the last corner in Scuba was even faster than the Integra R. Oh my! This is a circuit battle with 96 and 98 Integra R's under extremely difficult track conditions of rain and low temperatures. Here comes the Integra R. Gansan is trying to win this one on the Mazda circuit, which has very few passing points. He showed us some serious driving on the tight turns by using first gear at corner exit to avoid being overtaken.
Civic is fast. The Civic car led the race and won the battle. The best motoring car of the year for 98 is the Civic R. Many people say Honda only changed the bumper, and it's only a minor change from the former Civic, but actually, if you take a closer look at the 98 Civic Type R, the harness had been completely altered, the uh, injection rate modified, and the CPU is different. Various parts have been fine-tuned and designed for high quality and improved performance. Up until recently, the front brake rotors, which weighed about 11 pounds, had about a 10% weight difference from production rotors, meaning there was 1 to 1.3 pound difference, or in other words, about half a kilo from the left and right rotors. Such crudeness has been greatly improved. The same can be said for the 2000 Integra R. The drive shaft, hub, and hub bearings were all synchronized for better movement, which is the kind of precision work Honda has been doing for the past year or so. The battle with the Altezza and Celica at East Davis Circuit Miss shifted. Still, the Civic car passes the light tuned Altezza on the inside. Oh man, that miss shift cost me a lot. I overtook the yellow Altezza, but Gonson's Integra passed me. I'll get him. I'm much faster than the Altets on the straights. Look how I'm closing in on the Celica. The Civic car locks in on the 190 Pony, six-speed Celica. Tsuchiya's S2000 is right behind me. Let me challenge him on the straight after this corner. I'm like a turtle here. This car is really fast on these uphills. He nearly passes the Super Strut equipped Celica. But he waits for the next chance. Never left behind in corners, he challenges the Celica on a straightaway. Am I fast enough? Yes, I am. Sorry about that. Now I'm depressed. The Civic's faster. Oh well, that's life. When I shift to third, the VTEC doesn't work. 6,000 revs, 6,200, 6,500. The VTEC doesn't have the punch it should have. They should do something about the gear ratios. But this car is fun!
The Civic Car chases the Integral to the checkered flag while being passed by the 250 horsepower S2000, but manages to keep third, leaving the two Celicas behind. The suspension on this car is absolutely marvelous. It basically understeers, but the Celica's handling and brakes are not that much different to the Civic R. The biggest difference obviously is the engine power, especially here on the Ebisu circuit. When this car is climbing hills in second and third gear, the Civic R has a sure advantage. How is the Civic R on flat surfaces? Eco strength at the start, but the Civic R is unstoppable after it's shifted into third. There are people that put expensive engine oil that costs $20 a quart, but I say it isn't whiskey, so don't waste your money. The formula of expensive equals high quality doesn't work here. If you're confused on which oil to use, just go to your dealer and get the oil that the manufacturer recommends. I'm sure that would be one of the better choices. You don't really have to over-prep your car to run on the track. But there are a couple of things that I would recommend. One is the modification of the oil pan baffles. This is because when you drive around on the track with semi-slick tires, which cause tremendous g-forces, the oil literally sticks to the wall of the engine, causing air to enter the engine instead of the oil. This could result in serious engine damage. The other things are the brake pads. If you go on the track with stock pads, you'll burn them up. So I recommend you install racing pads. As long as you do these simple modifications, you'll definitely have fun with these Honda Type R cars. This is going to be fun, but under 6,500 revs is a bit weak. The gear ratio of the Integra R is well suited for this course. The rear tires haven't quite warmed up yet. As always, the Civic R has a great suspension. If you master one of these, you'll definitely be a good driver. This 99 Civic Type R is owned by one of our viewers, and it only has 3,500 miles on it. The car is fitted with Spoon's racing brake pads for this test. It revs up to 9,000 RPMs oh so easily. Let's start this Civic R test here at the Suzuka circuit. By the way, this is right after the Japan F1 Grand Prix. It would be difficult to use first gear here. These kind of corners you turn tight and don't go outside. I wonder what my lap time is going to be. This is a lot of fun. I 
was easy on the clutch. Man, this car is fast. I can go through the S corner at almost full throttle in third gear. Can I go through the reverse bank the same way? Mm, slow down a bit, around 6,000 revs. This uphill is a little difficult too. But this is fast. Here you have to shortcut the first corner. Yeah, it's fun on the Degna corner. I can approach this hairpin at full throttle. It's a bit dull until 6500 RPMs. The transmission feels okay, but the uphill is a little tough. Integra R obviously has more power from the bigger engine, but this Civic has a great suspension. It feels like I'm driving a racing car. I'm going full throttle into the S and the spoon corners. Can I go through here in fourth gear? Now let's drop it to third. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I feel like I'm Michael Schumacher in these chicanes too. So how'd I do? This engine is 1600 cc's, isn't it? The suspension has a lot of allowance compared to the engine power. The engine revs enough as it is, but even if you tune it, this suspension should be compatible with increased power. Not only in scuba or Ibiza, but you can drive with full throttle even here in Suzuka. Civic R is a great car. Let me suggest my version of how to soup up the Civic R. I'd lower it a bit, install a close gear transmission, and turn the engine into a 1.8 liter. When you've gone on the tracks for a long time, the engine would need a rebuild, and that will be the best time to do the conversion. With crank, piston rods, pistons, and gasket included, we can offer this conversion kit under $900. It would be fun to do the conversion yourself with your buddies, going through the instruction manual. Or if you know a trustworthy garage, you could just let your usual mechanic do it for you. The whole conversion could be done at around $2,000 with labor included. So I suggest you convert your Civic R's engine to an 1800cc. The engine basically becomes that of the Integra R. Not just an ordinary 1800cc engine. You will be able to enjoy it. First of all, this car can turn any corner without doing much. Look at the movement of my steering wheel.
The final version of the Type R Legend is a Group M Racing Integra R built by Spoon Sports. The Group M class has relatively less modifying regulations, but this car definitely has the Type R genes and Honda's racing spirit. Simply amazing. Look at my steering wheel. I don't need to make any corrections. It feels more rigid than the Group A Civic that I drove back a while ago. Front tires are ready to go. This is awesome. I didn't think front wheel drive cars could accomplish this kind of on the rail handling. Brakes are good too. This is amazing. This is an R. It definitely has Type R blood in it. You can have lots of fun on the track with the Honda Type R series, no matter what. You can register this car, come to the circuit on it, and go on the track and run on full throttle. You can't really expect what the Type R series has in other cars. The Group N is the top of the pyramid for these cars, and the Type R inherits the same spirit. Here's some bonus footage, a rare clip of the S2000 prototype being tested on the old course at Germany's famous Nürburgring. Here we go. Great acceleration from the start. We're here as tourists today. That means there's slow cars all around. drive cars are always fun to drive. Mm. 
Mm, this is the old starting point. Hey, what are you doing? Please, get out of the way! The car's handling these corners nicely. A bit wobbly here. Just went into sixth here. Pretty fast. I think the cornering speed is close to the NSX Type S. Very good balance. Let's check out the brakes. Not bad at all. The road is kind of bumpy here. The body rigidity is incredible. Now, how's the uphill from this point? Not bad. But from here, the speed will be around 125 miles per hour. And I've got the top down. Hope it doesn't affect the aerodynamics. The quality of this prototype is already at a high level. I'm humming along at 120 miles per hour. The exit speed here is about the same as that of the NSX. Ooh, the way the rear is sliding. That's what rear wheel drives are all about.
Here too, the body is really firm. There are some minor adjustments that need to be done, but Honda's done an impressive job. It's amazing that they can produce such cars. I mean, this isn't Tsukuba or some other circuit in Japan. We're at Nürburgring. This car's cranking along just fine here. Actually, it might be faster than the NSX around here. Now that's fast. Let me check out the zebra zone. I lost some stability when I got off the curb, but I was able to come downhill full throttle. Wow! This is amazing. We're not timing this, but it should be a good lap. Look how fast this car is. Oh yeah. The straight end acceleration is impressive. I felt that this car is faster than the normal NSX Coupe and maybe a good match against the NSX Type S. Well, it's a darn shame we couldn't feel what this car can really do on this last straightaway but we don't have the track to ourselves today. I just had a run at the old course. The car is very fast. I haven't had a chance to run on this track since I tested the NSX Type S. So it's been a while. Anyhow, the SSM, as it's temporarily called now, was outstanding even as a prototype. We had to run on the track, along with a bunch of tourists today. But I was able to chase around this one Porsche, which looked like it had a lot of modifications done to it, from the suspension to the roll cage. Unfortunately, we couldn't time the lap today, but from my experience of running on this track here in Nürburgring, the car is faster than the NSX, especially in the tight corners. In mid to high speed corners, the NSX might be a bit quicker. I wanted a little more precision and more response from the steering, but it is still a prototype. The car's overall performance really impressed me today. 
I was told that this car is kind of heavy, but you don't feel the weight when you drive this thing. I had the top down today, which should have been bad aerodynamically, but the car accelerated well, even going straight uphill, where you get up to about 125 miles per hour. I didn't have my eye on the speedometer all the time, so I'm not sure, but I had to be going around 120 to 130 miles per hour, which means that this car matches up well to the NSX.